many of us live within sight or at the very least a very short drive of Capitol Hill and so we try to keep a very close look at our congressional delegations. We call it Connect to Congress and we are doing it right now this afternoon and we're very pleased to welcome Maryland Congressman Chris Van Holland. He is standing by for us on the Hill. Congressman, thanks. Good to have you with us. It's great to be with you, Dave. Thank you. I want to talk about a bill that you have uh, introduced. Uh, you want to toughen state handgun licensing requirements. You think this could reduce homicide. Give us the, the, the brief look at this bill. How would it do that? Well, what it would do is adopt uh, for the country in terms of providing incentives for other states uh, the law that was passed in Maryland uh, a couple years ago. Uh, a study was just done by Johns Hopkins University that shows that when you have those laws that require a permit uh, in order to purchase a handgun, it dramatically saves lives. It reduces uh, homicide rates dramatically. Uh, they found that a law that had been on the books in Connecticut resulted in a 40 percent decline in deaths uh, by firearms. So. We're encouraging other states uh, to adopt similar provisions uh, because right now, although Maryland has adopted that kind of law, you still have handguns from other states that don't have those laws coming into Maryland and increasing the homicide rate. So we want to save lives by encouraging other states to adopt similar laws. It's going to be a tough sell, though, in some places. We know that. Well, there's no doubt it will be a tough sell. You know, my view is that. Uh, in Congress, uh, you don't give up from the beginning, right? You try to lay the groundwork and build support over time to get things done. Everything we've done in Congress over recent years has resulted from a sustained effort, and we need to build grassroots support. What we do know is that over 80 percent of the American public supports universal criminal background checks uh, to keep handguns out of uh, the hands of criminals, uh, people with a criminal record, and people who pose a risk to the community. So this is building on that idea. Congressman, let me shift gears if I can a little bit because this is coming uh, up in, in the, uh, the, the windshield pretty fast. Tomorrow there's liable to be a uh, vote in the House, or at least a preliminary vote in the House, on the, uh, the trade bill that would give the President uh, much expanded power to negotiate trade agreements. This is something that you and your fellow Democrats uh, wound up defeating the last time around. The president could come back to the Hill, as he did last week, to try and lobby support. What do you think, maybe 12, 14 hours out from another possible vote? What are the chances this go around? Well, I don't know what the chances are. What I do know is I will continue to oppose so-called fast-track authority. Uh, and the reason I will continue to oppose it is that it does not uh, provide Congress with enough input, number one. Uh, number two, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP mm -hmm. trade agreement that is being negotiated, has, in my view, many very serious flaws, uh, including the fact that it uh, does not have a provision to deal with a currency manipulation from foreign countries. And if you don't address that issue, it puts American jobs and wages as a, at a disadvantage. So I'm not sure why we would support a fast track process which prevents Congress from amending that trade agreement and making it better. A fast track process lets you vote up or down, but doesn't allow you to try and change or improve the agreement. And since I think it's a, a flawed agreement, uh, I'm not going to support a fast track process. And there's nothing the president might be able to say that would change your mind on that? Well, as I said, the current state of the Trans-Pacific Partnership mm -hmm. Agreement uh, has many, many serious flaws. It's got a lot of shortcomings. Uh, so, as of now, there's no reason okay. to grant fast-track up-down authority uh, to what I believe is a flawed agreement at this point in time. The FDA came out with that uh, report on metro safety today. Uh, the congressional delegations got a chance to hear a, a briefing and to read the report yesterday. What are your uh, immediate uh, re what's your immediate reaction to it, and what should Metro do now to try and shore up the 50 or so instances where they say the, or the FDA says they need to move quickly? Well, very, very troubling uh, report about uh, Metro from the FTA. Uh, laying out a series of directives uh, that Metro needs to take and needs to take uh, right away. Uh, one of the most troubling findings was that there's 
a huge amount of disarray and dysfunction right in the central nervous system of the metro uh, railway system, uh, right in the operations center. They said it was understaffed, uh, too many distractions, not enough training. Uh, a pretty damning report uh, there. So I'm hoping Metro will get on the ball and start implementing uh, these recommendations immediately. Is raising funding or, or, or getting the, the $150 million or so from Congress going to be a tough sell this go around? What do you think? Well, I hope not because the acting director of the FTA, the, the woman who issued the findings today, uh, stressed the fact that cutting funds for Metro uh, is not a way to help Metro. That will only hurt Metro. Uh, Metro is already stretched very thin. As I mentioned, one of the findings in this report is that the, the hub of the operation is understaffed. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want the hub of your operation to be understaffed, just like you wouldn't want your um, air traffic control operation at the airport sure. uh, to be understaffed. So no, cutting uh, funding for Metro would take us in the wrong direction. Chris Van Holland from Maryland. Good enough to spend a fair amount of time with us this afternoon. We appreciate it, Congressman. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Good to be with you.